Pretty fucked up that acid rain exists. Does you guys it? ever think about that? No, I don't, I don't think about acid rain. <laughs> that was, that was just the bit. first thing. <laughs> I've completely forgotten what it is. It's like when, when I don't know rain has, ever... it's when rain has really high pH and mm-hmm. uh, it melts like stone or whatever. I was just thinking about the phrase acid rain and I was like, you know what? That sounds fucked up. I don't think I've ever experienced it though. I'm pretty sure we're all like, I'm pretty sure we're probably always experiencing it. Yeah. Can you feel it? Uh, um, I mean, no, I think it's just like a, a thing where the rain's so acidic, like over time, it like erodes, erodes things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal. Gotcha. Yeah. I learned so about it in earth science because I was too stupid to go to chemistry in high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chemistry is the easy one. No, they, they like broke out my, my knowledge track or whatever for science and like two different things. So if you were smart, you got to go to chemistry freshman year, but if you're an idiot, then you had to do earth science. But chemistry is easy, so yeah. Earth science sounds made up. I don't think we have that. It was like geology and also like learning how to read maps and like learning about space. Just orienteering. <laughs> sounds like what a <laughs> went to... I would call like uh, science that like contradicts the Bible. Like, <laughs> that's earth science. Yeah. I'm talking God science. Yeah. <laughs> they should have had a. They should have had a God science class. <laughs> what'd you learn in god science <laughs> <laughs> what, what would what would what, what would they teach other than it just being like bible study um It'd be like, it, it should be specific like chemistry experiments to like uh somehow prove why abortion is bad yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just dissect like an aborted venus yeah. <laughs> this is what this is what happens. It to just traumatizes you into that. being like, yeah, we're never, never getting yeah. an abortion. This is what those babies do. I love the idea of like a school lesson that just ends with like, now wasn't that fucked up? <laughs> I feel like I had a couple of those. <laughs> Did you like yeah, like what? Just like at recess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're having lessons at recess. Yeah, the other kids would teach me a lot of lessons about. Um, <laughs> about why you're gay <laughs> mostly about why i was gay uh, i don't know like what grass tastes like <laughs> there there was a tree root that uh just like poked out of the ground looked like a penis you know that was that was a fucked up lesson don't you like that what was, what was the most what was the most fucked up thing that's happened to y'all like do you have any specific memories about like fucked up shit that happened to you on the playground uh yeah i have one um so when i was a kid uh for some reason i uh i didn't know what sex was but i had absorbed the concept of slut shaming somehow (laughs) which is which is the important (laughs) one to know first they they do (laughs) teach that one early (laughs) so i I was trying to like uh be mean to a girl but i didn't know the right i didn't know the word slut yeah Uh, so i just was telling everyone that she was sexy (laughs) <laughs> I thought I was like, mean. <laughs> like everyone was just like confused. They're like, "Do you want to kiss her?" And I'm like, "What?" And had like a full blown panic attack. Gross. <laughs> a lot of foreshadowing there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one time. I remember I was like bullied in kindergarten for being really into. Uh, the the Pixar movie A Bug's Life, which is like kind of fair to bully me for. You You're know? a bug chaser, I, dude. I love bugs, but like <laughs> this one girl like would call me Bug Boy, but in like a derogatory way. But I was like so stupid, as like, opposed to the affectionate way. Yeah, I was just like, well, I mean, yeah, I like bugs, so I'm, I'm a bug boy, like of course. And mm-hmm. then uh, I remember like senior year, she like came up to me and was like. I'm really sorry. Like I called you bug boy when like in kindergarten, I've always felt really bad about it. Like, I'm sorry for, for all that. I'm like, I didn't even remember that, but thanks. And, uh, now she's a lesbian. So, and married, which is good for her. Probably, probably then, your fault. Yeah. <laughs> the bug thing really is like a butterfly. Turned her off boys forever. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
And then another girl, I was like, she was like being a dick to like one of my friends. And I was like, hey, stop being a dick to one of my friends. And then she just like kicked me in the stomach down a slide. <laughs> just, <I> mean, <laughs> this is Sparta? Yeah. But it was like first grade or some shit. So <laughs> that's such a funny, like, I'm imagining like, like a parent being like, you just need to stand up to people when they bully you and then just smash cut to you. Going yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I was a, I was a little bitch in in elementary school, man. I cried all the time. I think everybody is. I was I sensitive. Yeah, you got a gentle mental. Yeah, I was a very sensitive, sensitive boy. I was also sensitive, but I, I guess nobody cared. I guess that's why I was sensitive. Uh, <laughs> one time, I I waved at somebody across the playground, and then they like ran over. And I was like, oh, he's gonna come talk to me. A, a nice friend. Um, and then he just punched me in the stomach as hard as he could, <laughs> and then he, and then he just walked away. <laughs> I was like, "All right, won't talk to that guy." Well, then, like middle school beats all that sensitivity out of you, and you just turn into a monster, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, you learn that um, you get to bully people by calling them gay. Yeah, you don't know what it means, but you know that it's bad. So. Yeah, you slather peanut butter on saltine crackers and throw them at the nut-free table. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a peanut allergy, so I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I started calling things gay until I was like an adult. <laughs> Deep bloomer in that respect. That's uh, it's not how it's supposed to go. Not at all. Yeah, no, you like call stuff gay, and then like high school, it kind of falls off. In college, no, you can't get away with it in college. And then like after college, for me, it really got a nice little renaissance. Mm-hmm. And it's fun calling stuff gay. <laughs> girls don't like it sometimes when you call stuff gay. Yeah, well, Hillary Duff told us you can't do it. D- did she? Yeah, you don't remember that commercial? There was a commercial with like Wanda Sykes and Hillary Duff, and then they were like waitresses at a restaurant, and one of the customers was like, "Wow, this food's gay." And then Hillary Duff was like, "Uh, don't say that." <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice little Who, PSA. Who's ever called food gay? Like that's not that's all you use that for. <laughs> It's fucking risotto. Yeah. Yeah. Real faggot right a better here. commercial would be like it plays that commercial and then it like zooms back and it's a it's a bunch of dudes watching that commercial. They're like, this shit's fucking gay. <laughs> Someone's like, hey. <laughs> or it zooms out to the camera crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on set. <laughs> on set filming a commercial. The camera is just like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what they meant by gay for pay. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, speaking of rain, oh. I heard um, I heard Austin experienced rain recently. <laughs> is that is that your research for the podcast? Yeah, we did yeah. experience some rain. <laughs> Do you have index cards over there? <laughs> No, I just uh, I just looked at your apartment and I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me yeah. So yeah, my apartment kind of uh, is fucked up right now. Um, and so for the last like two months, I haven't been uh, in my apartment because like the carpets and floors and shit got fucked up from the winter storm in February, and they hadn't fixed it yet. Oh um, damn. Yeah. It's and so food. this week. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to write a letter to these people because apparently in Texas, you have to do that. You have to, you can't like do anything legally until you write a fucking letter and then have it sent by like certified receipt in the mail. And they had to send me back this little card. It was a whole thing. And like, I, I write this fucking letter and it's like real fucking nasty. And I'm like talking about how their cavalier attitude really pissed me off. And like, you know, uh, I demand like to not have fucking carpet spikes or carpet nails and shit poking my feet. I want to walk around barefoot. I can't fucking do that. Um, and so I like go over to the office to hand it over to like the people, like a copy to them. Like I was mailing one. I wanted to hand one in person and be like, fuck you. You were going to read this in front of me. And then uh, I went to the office and it was closed and it's apparently permanently closed because they're like consolidated that office with a different office. So like all the people that were I was talking to in my apartment probably just all got laid off. And that's probably why they didn't do anything with it. 
And then I like walked over to the other office, like still angry. And I like talked to some lady I've never met to before. And I'm like, take this letter. And she just stood there reading it. And like, she was real smiley and nice. That was like, oh my God. (laughs) But now they're fixing it. So, (laughs) but yeah, I had to like pack all this shit up because they're going to do like all of the floors. Um, Yeah. That's good. It's fun to write mean letters. It's a lost art. Nobody does it anymore. I remember, okay. like, it's like at the beginning of all this, I like got COVID like immediately, like so fast there weren't even like tests and shit. Yeah. Um, and it was like I got COVID before they passed that bill that they have to give you like two weeks paid vacation if you or like two weeks sick time. Yeah. Um, so I had used like my vacation time being sick, and then afterwards I was like, hey, since they passed that bill literally one week later can you give me my vacation time back? And they were like, no. So I wrote a letter to like HR and I CC'd my boss being like, this is a very callous way to like, <laughs> you, you said cavalier. I used words like that and yeah. stuff. And I sent that email and then my boss immediately came over to my desk and like took my mouse and started trying to like unsend the email. <laughs> HR and I'm like, no, that's what I want to say. But HR had like already opened it. She's like, this is not good. I'm like, what? I just express my feelings. Apparently, you're not going to do that. Yeah, we've said on this podcast before, uh, HR is not your friend. No. That's why I was trying to be mean to them. Yeah, kind of intimidate HR. That'll that'll get them to do what you want. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Skillshy, when are you getting your your vax? Um, Brendan, you're all vaxed up, up, right? Yeah, yeah, I just got the second vax, and it was hell. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot. We have Brendan on the episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, uh, Brendan from Coward Hour. Yeah, a big get. I uh, feel bad because I, I was looking at our, our DMs, and I think I ghosted you on this like a year ago. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, that's, you know, he's too Hollywood for me. And that's fine. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> the podcast was also terrible a year ago. So that's like, yeah. fine. I, I was probably just like very depressed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I could tell. You're like, I think I have COVID. And I'm like, okay, well, like, that's fine. You don't need to worry about it. And then I asked you again like a month later. And you're just like, I think I still have COVID. And I was like, okay. I guess he doesn't want to do it. I was like, oh man, I'm really pumped out Brendan's on, on the podcast. And he just listens to an episode of Coward Hour. He's like, ah, caught it. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a, a crazy man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was like during the the, 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 um, the beginning of the pandemic like story arc. Yeah, which we, is, which is when great. you were saying that um, <laughs> it was like a, a Korean church conspiracy that they invented <laughs> COVID. And it was yeah. I, I was don't know. Me and Nick were really into Tim Dillon. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, Tim Dillon tweeted it, so it can't be a fucking lie. He's never been sarcastic in his life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like can't get vaxxed. Um, I'm eligible in because I'm technically a food manufacturer. Um, so I'm eligible <laughs> for that. And in my area my neighborhood is a hotspot. So they're like, you're double eligible. But um, the only vaccines that we have in the country are only allowed to go to people who are older than 50 years old. Hmm. Um, so, so basically Canada like, sucks in America. Yeah, Canada is Canada's fucking garbage. I'm, I'm real <laughs> mad about it. So you like, gotta, yeah, you you gotta move, move to the States, man. Mm-hmm. I'm trying. Out there is famously good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're like, you can book an appointment, but uh, if you show up, we will turn you away because this vaccine kills people who are under 50, which not true. But what vaccine is it? Uh, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> we, have, we have AstraZeneca, which. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah that one probably like, does kill people. <laughs> yeah. We don't even uh, we don't we don't have. Yeah, them. that's why we have it. Because <laughs> yeah. you guys are like, yeah, we don't want this. This is garbage. <laughs> Yeah, you guys know Julian. He's been on Coward Hour a couple. Yeah, times. yeah. He's in Spain, and he was going to get the AstraZeneca, but I think he was like, "All right, this seems dangerous, and I'm also very fat, so I'm not about to have a blood clot in Spain." Yeah, <laughs> I got my Johnson and Johnson one like the day before. They were like, "Oh, we can't give these to people anymore." Like mm-hmm. I got, got it in a Costco. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, the yeah. baby shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> I got my and like I felt so bad afterwards that my girlfriend she was like, "Should I have gotten Pfizer just in case like one of us dies in a decade? Like our kids love one parent." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> that's dark." <laughs> If one of you dies in a decade, I don't think it's the vaccine. <laughs> yeah, I, I split my wrist. She's like, the vaccine. <laughs> the brain the chip, man. Oh, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk told you to do it through the vaccine. Mm. Elon Musk is a loser. I fucking hate yeah. him so much. He's a dork. I hate him. As we've said repeatedly on coward hour it's rude to go to space yeah don't do it he's like i I saw something on reddit so it's obviously true but like he was saying like in like a couple years like two to five years or something we could be on the moon what's the fuck we've already been to the moon yeah there's nothing there we look there's nothing melt down your stupid fucking cars and build trains you idiot well have you seen have you seen the like tunnel things that he's drilled there's like yeah. no space to open your door inside, or if you have like a slightly big car, it just wouldn't fit. Mm-hmm. But if your car dies in the middle of that stupid tube thing that's underground, like you can't get out, like you're just stuck in your fucking car. Like, Aren't they conveyor belts? Isn't that what he's doing? Are they? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> I just saw a maybe picture. That was I'm, my like, that's idea. Too, I'm like, that's too small. <laughs> a conveyor belt would be like one of those I, fast walking things at an airport yeah. for cars. Yeah, so, so then you could shut your car off because it's underground. I don't think you want all the exhaust going everywhere. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But if you're driving a Tesla, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. We're both idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so stupid to be like, oh man, how do we fix uh, climate change and pollution from cars? The answer isn't like make fancier cars. It, just put it underground. Where yeah, just, look put, at. yeah, just make a shitload of batteries that we can't do anything with in ten years. Mm. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna fix everything. Just build trains, you idiot. <laughs> trains, yeah. I miss trains. Yeah, I thought billionaires loved Ayn Rand. That shit was. <laughs> <laughs> My dad had a sticker on the back of his car that said, "What like who is John Galt?" He <laughs> like had that for years. That sucks. I know. <laughs> I'm surprised he also didn't have a train bumper sticker based on who your dad is. <laughs> yeah, my dad has like mo- like me and my dad were into model trains when I was I was a cool kid. So not only was I into bugs, I was also into trains. Yeah. So he had like a huge train layout in our attic, and uh, now he currently has like a couple of those model trains in his office with also like British like like officer like swords from like the fucking 1800s or some shit. <laughs> like just like, right. there's like a cross of swords and then like a fucking train. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sick crest. Yeah. Maybe that's so many like libertarian dork or so many like autistic dork guys become libertarians. This is, they're just like, Oh sick. A book about trains. My favorite interest. Yeah. <laughs> just get, like red pill. Uh, I mean, yeah. Although like my, I was more of a Thomas the Tank Engine kind of guy, so I, I don't think I really, I don't think I ever really graduated from fake trains to like being the kind of autistic guy who's like, ah, oh, yes, I'm gonna know every single type of train there is. Mm-hmm. It's all just like letters and numbers. I can't fucking remember that shit. Yeah, um, yeah. The Polar Express. That's that's the one train I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. It's a scary movie, man. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> of Tom Hanks. Polar Express is truly the the um, Lolita Express of of, of uh, trains. It it truly is <laughs> in many ways. Yeah, in many ways, it was going to Little St. James for sure. It's a magic train. It could have. Mm-hmm. It absolutely could have. There's no proof that it couldn't have. Like on the off season when it's not going to the North Pole. Yeah, it only takes they two reuse trips a year. They reuse it and go to Little St. James when they're going south. <laughs> they take all the elves from Santa's house. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just elves on Little St. James. I mean, <laughs> probably legal, right? Probably. Elves have to be like hundreds of years old. Yeah, they're like 800-year-old, uh, <laughs> seven-year-old body. Yeah, it's like the anime loophole. Yeah. I really fucking hate that one of my favorite animes is like the poster child for that 
specific loophole and that's not why i like it but i have to like i like <laughs> it's really good and then i like try and recommend it to people and i'm like okay well there is like a 500 year old vampire and she looks like a little girl and like they kind of sexualize her sometimes but like no it's not like that i swear uh and like the guy like kind of has this weird sexual thing with his sister but it's not like that and it's like <laughs> i feel like that's too many disclaimers for a recommendation it's what such anime? a good show it's a uh, monogatari um I'm- if you know of like, there's a infamous scene where the main guy brushes the teeth of uh, his sister, and like they're both yeah, like the, kind of busting nuts during the whole. Scene. Dude, it literally like the toothbrush yeah. scene. You Google that. It, that's yeah. like a thing. Um, yeah, but that's not from one of the good seasons. Yeah, so it's I don't think that I would. Uh, I don't think I would do that. Yeah. <laughs> situation. I don't think I would do that. No, yeah, that's, that's I can probably see for that the best. <laughs> I've never brushed my sister's teeth once. I never. Yeah, have. is it? I don't think I've. Br- I don't want to brush anybody's teeth. No, I'd feel weird brushing like a dog's teeth or something. Yeah, and then I think you're supposed to do that sometimes. I think you just give him one of those bones that says it does it. Yeah, <laughs> the shitty, yeah, the shitty like rubbery things. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just trust that. I trust all packaging pretty much. You yeah, guys, there's no the reason not to. I mean, like, I I read the, like, food packaging that says gourmet, like, that has no legal definition, like, authentic has no legal definition. You could just put that on anything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, so it's all fake. But anytime I actually look at food packaging, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is good for me. This, this rigatoni, <laughs> it's probably good. It's in a blue box. How could it be wrong? This frozen pizza? Oh, man. Yeah, that's like frozen your, pizza in a white box. How could that be bad for you? That's like your primary food group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Italian food can't be bad for you. That's a that's fact. That's true. Because Italians are so hot. Yeah. <laughs> Italians also live to be forever. Yeah. So they watch the Sopranos. Those dudes were always getting pussy. So that must be what women find attractive in real life. Yeah. I think I just I think I'm failing in that I'm only like twenty percent Italian. Hmm. I feel like they can tell that I'm not. You're, you're leaning into it too hard. Yeah, I'm leaning <laughs> into it too hard. And also, yeah. So they're like, yeah. I'm going to go fuck a real fat Italian guy. I'm like, ah, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it's just like my dad. Corner, but I did get real fat. So I'm pretty legit, I think. Yeah. yeah. You mm-hmm. could steal Italian valor. Yeah. Plus, my girlfriend is more Italian than I am. So that means that my children will be more Italian than I am. So I'm starting the yeah. cycle of improvement yeah. that one day my uh, descendants will be 100% Italian. Yeah. And you'll be remembered as Italian. Mm-hmm. I will be. Italian by marriage. That's, that's well, really Italians funny. loop back around into being POCs again. I don't think they ever stopped. That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little, a little test like, and he passed. Can you imagine like, uh, cause like people go on, um, you can go on like ancestry.com and stuff. And like, sometimes there'll be like an audio recording for like a great grandmother or something. Really? Like occasionally, like, like if, um, cause sometimes like the library of Congress has like interviews with like veterans and stuff. Yeah. And I just, it just occurred to me. I was like, are my like, great grandkids one day going to like listen to coward hour just have the whole <laughs> archive yeah <laughs> just be like i need to not breed yeah my great great grandfather it appears he was retarded he did some <laughs> great black looney tunes bits <laughs> <laughs> they're googling like what is looney tunes <laughs> uh, maybe they'll even have to google like what is black voice maybe yeah. it's a term lost to time Mm-hmm. Oh, they look around. Everybody's like beige. Everyone's the same color, and they're like, "What? What? What are? What are Asians? <laughs> What's a white person?" <laughs> Hopefully, we will get to that point. It's the future that the liberals want, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dream of a future where everybody is the same color, so that we can all do black voice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, in like fifth grade when they're like, "Okay, you have to do a." a debate topic about should we have school uniforms or not? And it's like kind of that, but on a global scale, Mm -hmm. you know, your skin's your school uniform. Yeah. And, uh, everybody's, you know, we're all good. Cops are just confused. They pull someone (laughs) over and they're like, 
what do I do? <laughs> Am I allowed to shoot them? <laughs> Oof. Maybe. maybe the- <laughs> topical. <laughs> I mean, that's been topical for decades. So. Yeah, well, that's true. Things are really revved up now that the country's kind of, well, our country, not your country, Skillshy, um, is <laughs> opening back up again. Do your cops kill people? Uh, not as much. We get like, I don't know, 100 a year as uh, opposed to like 100 a month. That'd be fucked up to get shot by a Mountie. It would be. <laughs> do they, do, do your cops primarily kill like the, um, like natives? That's, yeah. that's, not the, that's not the right way to say it, but I don't, I don't, I uh, just, you know, are, I think are, are there a lot of fine. Inuit people? Yeah. Uh, not in the city, but if you go anywhere north, there's a, there's a real high population of like the Métis, mm-hmm. the, the Cherokee, I think. Oh, I know, I, Cherokee, I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one people know. That one in like Tomahawks. Didn't they have those in like Virginia? Yeah, we don't have tomahawks here, but mm-hmm. you know tomahawk from the from the weapon. Yeah, and, then, and you're like, oh yeah, that's that's based on a peaceful people. Have you been on an Indian reservation before, or I, Native American we don't, reservation? We don't call them that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use their slave name. Um, no, I, I have not. Dude, they're rough. Yeah, they're not. They're not doing well. Yeah, that's by design, I think. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a little too LA, I, I stopped in Arizona at a bunch of like uh like reservation adjacent like uh tourist like strip malls. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty sick. There were a bunch of like knives stores and stuff. A lot yeah. of fucking um turquoise. Yeah, a lot of turquoise knives. Yeah. Uh dream catchers. Dream catchers. Maybe I'll be that guy going forward. I'll be like a dream catcher guy. <laughs> It's like wearing like turquoise bolo ties. Yeah, that's a personality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I'm so mad because I, I, I just remembered that I wanted to wear a bolo tie to this wedding I'm going to, but it's black tie optional, which mm-hmm. uh, is like you basically wear a tux if you're like not poor. <laughs> and then uh-huh. if – which like – but then you're also gonna have people there in like jeans or something. I don't know. I don't know why anyone would make it black. You get the, the gamer CEO blazer with jeans. No, I'm gonna. You know, I, my my outfit picked out is like gonna be. I'm not because I got the mullet. I'm gonna do the little like really tiny thin mustache, mm-hmm. um, just to be really obnoxious. John Waters style. Sure. Are, are you trying to like object to the wedding? No, I'm just trying to like make it about me. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I can, because I'm not nice. Um, yeah, uh, Ooh, you, I have some of these. You should get these, like, um, yeah, like the the cufflinks with pornography on them. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get this like blue and black like floral like jacket, and then like matching shoes with no socks. That's like mm-hmm. a look, but also, like it'll be like cool, but also like obnoxious Who, whose wedding is this my cousins i don't oh, even have any beef with her really like, i'm just <laughs> being a you're, you're about to it <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm gonna create beef but yeah don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> so wear like a gray suit with a black tie <laughs> be, be, like just play. <laughs> well to the ceremony it's gonna i'm gonna be normal uh-huh but for the party i'm gonna i'm gonna have fun you're doing That's an what the outfit change. For. You're gonna do an outfit change. Well, so it's literally the next day. I'm not doing it like it's not. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a, it's a whole weekend event. So I'm not. I thought you're gonna be like in your car changing like outside of. <laughs> I the, would do that. Hall. <laughs> I did that for my uh, <laughs> two days conveniently, but if it wasn't, mm-hmm. I would be doing this. Yeah, I mean, I did that for getting my um my vaccine because I wore like a really tight button down that day to work, and I just was able to schedule it that morning without even thinking about it. And I didn't want to like strip down at Costco to like get stabbed. So I like, went to target and bought a t-shirt and changed it. went to the thing. That's, that's rich people shit. It was a $10 <laughs> shirt. It wasn't that bad. Okay. Yeah. How many $10 shirts do you think I own? You okay. like get, you have nice clothes. 
I do have very expensive clothes. I, I like to steal poor candy valor money on, on like. I steal poor valor on this podcast. All right, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to do the gimmick uh-huh. of this podcast. Uh, so I'm going to go into my bad boy of the week. Wow. Um, do the bad boy uh, of the week. This. We do at least two. If you have a bad boy you want to talk about, you can go into it. Well, it, could just, it could also be like a personal grievance or perhaps yeah. a confession of your own crimes. Yeah. Very open-ended. Yeah. What about crimes I'm planning? That would be cool. Uh, you you yeah. mention it now and then we can be like, we can yeah. read your article in the future. Nice. Maybe we'll be All in right, the news. I'm going to kill the president. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> By which I mean Donald J. Trump, who I believe is he's still the president. Still the president yeah. <laughs> I'm the only guy who thinks he's still president who's mad about it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the position that everyone's just like, no one can be mad about, but everyone's very confused. Yeah, they're very confused. <laughs> Those are the best positions. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the inauguration, he never actually said these words, which means that it was not he, legal. He Therefore, I have to kill him. <laughs> yeah, Biden is secretly under house arrest, and we're pretending he's president, and that's why I'm going to kill Donald J. Trump. And then Biden can actually be president. No, Hillary can be president. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so my that would be saying I committed some sort of like insane atrocity for like Hillary, and then like a girl just had to be like, uh, "Well, that's good." I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's for Hillary, so it's good, right? And they're oh, like, yeah. oh. <laughs> "Ultimately, I think you're winning." Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, this this teenage boy, he's a minor, so a little bit controversial. Mm-hmm. I don't like where this is going already. <laughs> yeah. um, is he hot? Uh, they they will not release his photo because he's a minor. Because he's but... too hot. <laughs> so Based on the crime, I'm going to assume that he's not too hot. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> teenage boy charged in Canada's first incel terror case. Oh, sick. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's not good. Is that no. a legal... Is incel like a legal classification in Canadian yeah. law? Yeah, he's legally a terrorist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know terrorism, but it's like, is it specifically like, like this thing you can be charged with like a hate crime if it's racist? Is it they capital can, I incel? Like incel <laughs> yeah. crime and the sentence is worse? Um, yeah, it, it is literally like it counts as terrorism over just a murder. Holy shit. Uh, yeah, yeah so it's like... <laughs> That so is this, not dude's rock. I'll tell no. you. Yeah. Um, not to so be on the side is, of incels, but I think that's a little that's a little excessive. It can just be a crime like any other crime. Yeah. So what the government is saying that uh, can discriminate. So if I commit a murder and I don't have sex beforehand, <laughs> the government can discriminate against me. Uh, it's possible. You need to get um, a new constitution up there. Dude. Yeah, dude. You got to leave Canada, man. <laughs> yeah, get out. Know. Yeah. We were so smug last year. We were just like, wow, look at America. You guys are fucking up. And now um, we, we have fallen off hard. Um, so here's the news article. Incel is short for involuntarily celibate. It generally, though not exclusively, refers to online groups of men who feel they are unable to enter into sexual relationships. They blame women for their grievances, which they discuss in internet forums. Okay, yeah. I mean, when you say it like that, because you know, yeah, that's discuss that's it in group. internet forums... I am not fucking, um, and it is women's problems, but I'm not an incel. <laughs> <laughs> but when you phrase it like that, I mean, that's not fair. Yeah, really, that co- that throws a wide net. I yeah. yeah, it definitely does. The attitudes of men who visit the online message boards vary wildly. Uh, yeah, that's, that's frequent- just any guy online that isn't fucking. They frequently <laughs> vent anger against sexually prolific men, a.k.a. Chads, and women, a.k.a. Stacys. More generally, incel forums often include rants aimed at feminism and women. Um, so that's that's the setup to this article about the 17-year-old boy. Um, and this guy was in the Coward Hour Discord? Oh, uh, probably. <laughs> probably. As moderator, I should probably look into that, but... Uh... <laughs> 
know, you got to crack down as a, as a policeman of the Discord. <laughs> it's fine as long as White OJ doesn't say the N-word. <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> he wants to closer. say it so bad. <laughs> White, White OJ is riding a line, but he... <laughs> I'll give him. He's he's sticking on. He's on the line. <laughs> he is on the line. I, but every time I see him post, I'm like, right. all right, yeah. <laughs> I'll really look at this one. It's it's funny because like uh, it's like at, like if someone were to like say something really fucked up and racist, and they're like, what can Nick and I even really do? Because it's the coward <laughs> hour. Yeah. Discord. So we just have to like quote reply and be like. Stop. <laughs> you have to be like, don't do this. Like, you, you don't have to leave or anything, but like, we have to at least make it visible in the screenshot that we're saying no. <laughs> Good old plausible deniability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all you need in today's hey, buddy, age. That's a demerit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a do not. Yeah. There's do's and do nots. This is a do don't. You get uh, five demerits, you're in detention. <laughs> you get timed out for 300 seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just throw them in a separate chat. That's just like all the other bad boys who've who've said naughty words. Uh-huh. And they'll just keep saying the n word in the little banished exiled chat. Uh, <laughs> get it say, out of their system. <laughs> somehow we program in. It's like um when you're an iPhone texting another iPhone and you can like say congratulations and the balloons fly yeah. out. <laughs> now I really want, I really want that to be a feature. <laughs> uh, so anyway, this man stabbed a woman because she was a woman. Uh, real fucked up. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't be doing that. Yeah. Um, it was you gotta at least say it for something else. Yeah, an erotic <laughs> massage parlor. Yeah, and I don't know if those she have been those have been there. popular this year. I don't know if she even worked there. Mm-hmm. I think she was just being just, there at yeah. the time, Who? and he was just like, "Oh, you're a woman in a massage parlor." It's um, pretty so- sick that the 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 dude in America who shot up the massage parlors. It's pretty sick that like uh, everybody got excited about it being racism because it really took the heat off incels for that one. But yeah. that, I mean, I said it on an earlier episode, but I'm, it's definitely more of a, in my opinion, as mm-hmm. an Asian passing sometimes man, it's more of a hate crime towards, you know, sex workers and stuff than I just that happened to be obvious. racist also. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty obvious he was like an insane, like, uh, like, evangelical guy. Yeah. But, uh... Didn't he come out and say he was addicted to... Okay. Yeah, he said, like, I did this because I hate women and sex. And they're like, <laughs> look at this racist. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trying to cover up his racism by being sexist and killing people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> racism. We sure got him. <laughs> racism yeah. is the biggest crime today. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, they charged him with murder, and then like two days later, they they decided that it was terrorism. So now um, he's just like a he's on the no fly list forever, and he's he's a terrorist. Very is he, cool. Is he going to prison? Um, would you say that he, when they were like, I, I would say he is going to prison. Was he like, let's go? This to is prison. a this is a bit for nobody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, I guess I'll do mine. Let me. Uh... Uh, I just want to round out real quick. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, so he was inspired by a, a 2018 incel who uh, drove through a, a crowd of people. Being and inspired killed. by other He's inspired by... Which I will say, <laughs> tisk tisk. Yeah. Um, he, he was, so the first guy drove through a crowd of people because he was an incel. Um, and he said there was years of rejection by women, um, and he identified as an incel, mm. uh, and, and this was retribution. Um, so then this guy came along and, uh, only 17, I don't think you count as an incel, to be honest. I, I think having sex at 17, um, doesn't happen for anybody ever. I hope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, 
so he was inspired by that guy. And the guy who drove through the crowd of people was inspired by Elliot Roger. So it's funny to list your references like you're a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bibliography of fucking incel guys. Yeah. You see, in this hate crime, it really sounds like early Elliot Roger mixed with like. <laughs> yeah. Um, mixed with like some Dylan Roof. Like, man, it's really like a whole new sound. You got to listen to it. <laughs> it's the whole new way. You play like a like you play you play like a cassette tape and it just screams. <laughs> uh, I yeah. like the well I shouldn't say I liked the one. Um yeah. uh, the yeah. one where that guy in like fucking New Zealand or whatever shot up that church and then like sped away to initial D or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christchurch. Yeah, 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 that's the one. It, I thought that was uh Certainly an interesting way to do it, I, I if I had to phrase it delicately. Um, yeah. It's got some personality to it. It's that very one, funny that that song, like, the next day, like, comments were turned off, and I was like, sick. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what these said. <laughs> yeah, that guy was really an auteur. <laughs> He's like, this is going to be fucking to a funny terrorism. <laughs> yeah. We've been saying since the beginning of this podcast that we need, like, a... A basic bitch shooter. You oh that? yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, just like a white girl who just mm-hmm. kill like, incels. Yeah, yeah, like while holding a pumpkin spice latte or something. I yeah, the bit. yeah. I, um, I this was a hard rejection from Hard Times, but I I pitched an article that it was like, uh, it's time for a mass shooter woman of color. <laughs> it's, I mean, I'd like to see it. Mm-hmm. hopefully not in person well i mean at mm-hmm. this point you know whatever but yeah. might as well <laughs> this sh- this mass shooter broke the glass ceiling yeah it's important I mean, it would be a big moment for feminism they're getting real close man i think they're <laughs> they're, they're getting close there <laughs> uh. yeah i feel like we're Five to, I feel like we're like five years away from like a Twitter woman getting radicalized the same way that like, uh, like poll on 4chan radicalized dudes. Yeah, I, I think we might see some white women shooters once everyone fully turns on white women and like we're, the gears are slowly turning there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we once, that, once that, that goes, and, oh well, she was like ambiguously brown, right? Yeah. Yeah, so she doesn't count. No, but that's, you know, it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is a step. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, yeah, so yeah. one day there's going to be, just imagine the first hot bay school shooter. Yeah. I hope she shoots me. I mean, I wouldn't be in, maybe I'll be a teacher. Just like <laughs> waiting. <laughs> I'll become a teacher just in case. <laughs> I'll, I'll become a teacher and like try and trick one of the, the girls to like become a shooter. Just start yeah, doing you, you die hard. They they're doing your autopsy and they're just like, ah, oh, he's fuck he's fully hard. <laughs> and someone tries to give you the benefit of the doubt. They're like, oh, maybe it's like Gregor Morris. It's like, nope, we cut it open. It looks like it's been hard since before the before he died. <laughs> it's like when you cut down a tree, you got the rings of how old it is. <laughs> this yeah. boner is eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> It's been hard for years. Ever since I started the the big scheme. (laughs) He really should have contacted his physician at this point. Yeah. That's why I'm so stupid. How did he stand up at the blackboard like this? And those khakis? (laughs) Does that teacher, like, get hard? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, there's always one teacher that's just always... Yeah. He's got the eight-year boner. Yeah. We, had, we had one, um, my seventh grade teacher, uh, who we, um, he, he he was hard and he was like, uh, he was like on his like, he was like, he was like squatting for some, some reason. And then he like stood up and his boner like bounced like down up and then like back to center. And we all laughed like, hard, like everybody in the class laughed. And he just like. How, how big were his pants where he had all that, that room? <laughs> <laughs> there were some there were some roomy uh some roomy drawers <laughs> but he just played it off 
he did it again. <laughs> like, like, oh, it's got a good laugh. <laughs> They're engaged. It's like that SpongeBob episode where he rips his pants, so he just keeps <laughs> making his dick bounce. Yeah. <laughs> got a good laugh. Yeah, you just like what? I'm a pedophile. <laughs> what? Tell your parents; they're not going to believe you. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was trying. I was like, "That's a bit," but that's also how it works. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. They're like you're just mad he gave you a pedophile date. out in the open. Because like our our like high school director guy was that, and I was even one of the people who was like, "There's no way he's a pedophile." Then he's like mysteriously like kicked out of the school like under weird circumstances, and there nobody's allowed to talk about it. And I'm like, "Oh well." I had two of those. Were they also? Was it a what kind of teacher? It's got to it be like English. Principal. Oh, it was the principal mm-hmm. both times. Um. <laughs> 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 was it this that guy gets yes. fired and they hire a different pedophile? <laughs> no, no um, in this interview they had to be like, "All right, now we gotta ask this: <laughs> you a child molester?" <laughs> I know this is crazy, but we just need to we need to put it on the we're, form. We're going by the honor system. Here. We need you to say no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you two tries. <laughs> um. Yeah, the, I I guess I can't say it because this is public. I'm gonna type it in the chat for you guys because these were their names, and I, I think it needs to be on record. This is the first one. Those my principal in seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> Not a joke. That's real. Just, and, don't, say, just don't say his first name. You can say that. That's yeah, so yeah. That's yeah. That's a generic name. That sounds like a made up name for a principal character in like a TV show. <laughs> yeah, um, these are fake names, for the record. Um, but they're real. That was that was my second one. I moved. I moved. Are you seriously to... not going to say these on <laughs> my <laughs> Say the names. Yeah. All right. Um, just these are fake. Totally fake. Uh, Mr. Lester was was my first principal in seventh grade, and he he was outed as a pedophile. Mm. And, and so my parents were like, "We need to move you to a completely different city because we don't want to be anywhere near this." Um, and then Mr. Bader was, uh, my principal in, <laughs> Mr. in the Bader. next, Mr. Bader, um, <laughs> was my principal in, uh, the next school. And then, uh, after a year he got out as a pedophile and he was embezzling money, which who's to say what's the worst crime. Mm-hmm. Well, as, a, as an accountant, I know where I stand. <laughs> yeah. At my yeah. school, the, the gay teachers had to be more secretive than the pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. <That track>. Yeah. <laughs> the pedophiles were like, oh man, I can't imagine how hard it'd be keeping it a secret if I was a gay teacher. I had a job I had with a pedophile. I had a pedophile coworker who like would tell me to do not like tell me to do stuff like like diddle children or whatever, but like you know, he'd give me assignments at my job because he was a, a he was your superior. Yes, mm-hmm. and I never liked him. And then uh, that's good. Then my mom told me about him being a pedophile, and she's like, "I," you just like you always had a bad feeling about him. I'm like, not because of that. Like he just thought he was an asshole. He's <laughs> always telling me what to do. He was that, really he was really how- weird with his son. Not in like hopefully not in a pedophile way, but. He would like spend minutes like singing his kid good night like every night he'd have to like sing to this kid for like ten minutes to make the kid fall asleep. Just fucking weird. It's a weird thing to do. <laughs> not gonna That's gonna be a huge rush though, finding out that your dick boss is like arrested as a pedophile. Yeah. That's a huge huge W. <laughs> it's like yes, I knew it, yeah. No, I I love being uh vindicated for <laughs> not liking people for completely the wrong reasons. <laughs> uh, so my crime is a little lighter than um, incel shooter guys or whatever. This has been a bit of a heavy episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, McDonald's, you know, you know, the damn frosty machine or McFlurry mm-hmm. machine. I'm saying frosty. Cause I got a free frosty today at Wendy's. Uh, not sponsored. Ooh. Just I love Ooh, the. I love we the should product. be though, Lady Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, we that. simp for you on a weekly basis. <laughs> it's true. I got a Wendy's twice last week. Yikes! 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so the, the McFlurry machine or whatever is always fucking busted at McDonald's. And this one guy was like, this shit's fucked up. And apparently the reason why it, um, this article was telling me, the reason why it's so fucked up is because it's like got really arcane like error messages and you have to put in like a bunch of codes to like even read what it says. And like it's all proprietary. So like the, the vendors who sell the um, machines to the restaurants and stuff, they have like their own very expensive mechanic people to fix it, which in and of itself is a bit of a crime. That's not sort of what I'm getting to. Um, So this guy and his wife were like, (laughs) this is a true crime podcast about right to repair laws. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Someone has to do it. Nobody else is. We talk about all the crimes that the other true crime podcasts don't want you to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John Deere tractor. (laughs) Look into it. It's fucked up. Oh yeah, no, oh, yeah. You have it's like DLC <laughs> for your tractor in order to get the work. I think you mean DRM, but yeah. I'm sure there's DLC too. I'm sure you can download. <laughs> you can download D- a DLC and then the brakes work. Yeah. <laughs> Cars are like that. Otherwise, you just have to bail out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you just drive it till it runs out of gas. Yeah. I... <laughs> Hey guys, I bought a tractor early access and it's just a steering wheel. <laughs> you, you, leave, you leave a review and it's like Thumbs down. <laughs> this is great, but I hope they it actually cuts grass in a future update. It's fun <laughs> to drive around, but I really see the potential here. There's just not enough content. Um it's a real like atomic football situation. What? You know the atomic football? No. All right, forget it. Okay. Uh, it's like a brief phase with like the, you, the buttons to launch nukes or whatever. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. I don't know why it's called a football. Someone probably because it looks like a football. Yeah, Maybe now that now it sounds, that sounds like something I do up. remember. I don't know. It's not made up. Anyway, McDonald's. More importantly, mm-hmm. so um, this dude and his wife were like, "Fuck McDonald's and their and their schemes." So they like made like a little device thing what's it called it says in the um it's called a thingamajig kitch k-y-t-c-h um and it's like a little device it acts as a surveillance bug inside of the machine but it like also lets you like hack the machine so you can like fix it properly um and mcdonald's is having none of that and the manufacturer or whatever. Um, And so they've been like going around to like various like franchisees and like trying to like rip the the little piece of machinery out of it so that they can't like repair their own fucking thing. Um, But they're like McDonald's is mad because it's like a breach of information and it could cause injury, but like, no, it fucking can't. Um, Let's see. It's a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top. It sounds like, Mm -hmm. Just because people want their fucking McFlurries, man, and I get it. Um, I thought they just had to be cleaned for like eight hours a day. No, they're saying like, here, let me read the thing where they're talking about that. Because honestly, the rest of the article kind of sucks. And I didn't really pay that close attention to it when I picked it. But um, I don't, I, I'm completely confused. <laughs> That's what's going on. Yeah, no, it's just uh, you can't repair McDonald's things. And these people were like, we're going to make a fucking game shark for your McDonald's. Uh, okay. like flurry machine, and then McDonald's was like, "You're gay. Don't do that." Uh-huh. <laughs> That's basically right. it. All right. Um, right. Now I understand. You said Game Shark. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So apparently, like, Game you have Shark to... dick. Like I plug it in between my dick and my body, and then I... <laughs> just adds vibration. Yeah. Ribs. <laughs> You can just you can bust. It just makes it, yeah, it just makes it get hard. <laughs> Changes the code, so it's like can get hard. Yes, but it like True. corrupts your file and you stay hard for eight years. <laughs> I get uh, lit up in a shooting. <laughs> I hate when my save file on my dick gets deleted. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't really yeah. happen anymore, though, does it? Like, save what? files getting fucked up? I, don't I know. fucked um, I fucked mine up. Um, I 
put too many mods on Stardew Valley, and I fucked <laughs> up where um, I my wife kept having miscarriages. <laughs> Like she would get pregnant, and then she would say like the baby was born in the night, and then there'd just be no baby. <laughs> That's <laughs> so sad. <laughs> that, around, I'm like, man, this is fucked up. I just stop playing. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's one of those like developer things. Like uh, one of the first Animal Crossings is like if you time traveled, they like they fuck. I forget what they did. They did something. They fucked up your game, and they're like, don't do that. Your save file is broken now. Mm-hmm. Well, they had they had the mole come in and yell at you for changing yeah. the clock. Yeah. Um, I don't think I don't know. Animal Crossing sucks. Come to your house, they hit your dick with a hammer. I yeah. wish they did that in Animal Crossing. It'd be more fucking interesting. <laughs> it's a good game sometimes. No, I had too so many bad like memories like- last year with sweeties on uh, in Animal Crossing. <laughs> If you'd go on Animal Crossing dates and you'd be it like, is, check out this secret beach. It is for sweeties, for sure. Oh, yeah, no, girls, I mean, back then they did. I don't think any of them care now. No. But I'm like, what, what about these really obscure Japanese games? And they're like, kill yourself. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that, that tracks. Yeah. yeah. So what's the conclusion of this ice cream thing? Uh, yeah, I should have figured that out. Um... <laughs> So they, they sell the gadget to the franchisees. McDonald's is mad. Um, I think there's a lawsuit. Um, a lawsuit. Wait, 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 wait. There's a lawsuit from the device people to McDonald's. Okay, you that's inter- that's you interesting. Can't tell me I don't... Right. Um, blah blah blah. Digital ice cream. This is a good radio. Yeah, it's great. Uh, the people love it when I don't do the research. Um, I think people love when we have no idea what we're talking. About. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's art and on purpose. Um, because people well, yeah, listen, using and that's technical most... corporate crimes. <laughs> people listen, and most of it is us being like, "I didn't read this thing before," but. <laughs> And there's the one time where I knock it out of the park and now I'm like, well, I'm not living up to that. Mm -hmm. Um, They describe the, the digital ice cream machine in McDonald's as a Italian sports car and how complicated it is. Wow. Um, Yeah. I don't know, man. McDonald's sucks. Yeah. Yeah, This is so, this is such a long article. Holy shit. My article was like three paragraphs, and I didn't even read it. No, it's I'm not reading all this. This is insane. It's all stupid legal bullshit. Uh, McDonald's right, is the on. bad boy for uh, having a shitty right, ice cream. McDonald's, machine. Wendy's, sponsor us. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a crime you'd like to discuss, Brendan? Um, no. Can I'm you sorry. follow that? I didn't. Uh, <laughs> didn't um, hear anything. Neither did we. Yeah. <laughs> so, i'm sorry i don't that's that's totally that's fine. fine yeah uh-huh. two is probably more than enough i think we need to rehabilitate the the image of incels though like i think we need to um <laughs> like you know how like bikers will do like toys for tots yeah, yeah. Like, oh, i guess I mean, they're not all criminal gangs we need we need to get like a bunch of incel guys together and adopt a highway or something <laughs> well there's a there, i think there. There was, um, there might not exist anymore. Yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. There used to be an incel subreddit called incels without hate. It would be all like the, the pure good incels for hate mm-hmm. speech. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> they went like, to the dark I, side. <laughs> it's inevitable. Like, as a, like, as a society, we need to confront the fact that like, young men are like isolated and turn to the internet and like find themselves in like dark places and get radicalized. Well, I yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Cause it's yeah. like, it's like you either listen to like, you know, Jordan Peterson telling you to clean your room and like some other stuff. Mm-hmm. And who's to say how good of advice that is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you guys have talked about it on coward hour or yeah. like you listen to just like anybody on Twitter being like, Oh, just kill yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, of course they're going to go the way mm-hmm. that they go. Like Jordan Peterson, I think, is an idiot. Yeah. But at least he's like speaking to like isolated young men and trying to give them hope. And he's giving some actionable like advice. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Clean your room. 
always pet a I, cat when you sleep on the street. I could Great afford advice. to clean my room a little bit. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then I get mad because like like people on Twitter like um like there was that article like comedy has an alt right problem about like oh man these evil comedians are like uh, saying offensive jokes and then they become terrorists and to me it's like okay so we should maybe not make it so the only place that you can joke around in that kind of way is like nazi spaces on like secret forums like maybe yeah. we make it so that we can goof around on twitter like everybody else it's like no no that can't be the answer no that doesn't solve anything yeah. well i do i do hate it when like <laughs> old dudes get in on cancel culture shit though oh yeah we were talking about that in someone posted something in the in discord in, right yeah in, yeah, about the guy, like the old guy who was like mad at Disney for being PC. It's like, shut up. Yeah. That is not the problem. <laughs> no, my my dad was like emailing me this article about. He's like, oh, let me let me read you what he said because it's really, and he's never gonna listen to this, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully, uh, he was like, he sent me this article about um, how oh. He said, you have to read this letter. That's the subject line. And he said, interesting (laughs) response to changes in private schools from very liberal Upper East Side of Manhattan. Apparently, I'm not the only one who believes schools should teach people how to think rather than what to think. And like the the letter is just this like unhinged monologue about how like um, like some private school is like teaching diversity, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. just that it's like good or something. And it's like, I mean, you know, that whatever, but like also I don't, I'm not going to hold a private school like, uh, like they're just making money. So like yeah, clearly they capital. think it's less of a, a loss to like cater to woke shit than to cater to like this fucking 20 page letter about how teaching mm-hmm. kids that, you know, when we colonized America and like genocided the Native Americans, like that might have been an oopsie. But also, yeah. that's why we're here. So, you know, who's to say? Yeah, um, dads need to sit on the sideline of, of the culture war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're really shooting us in the dick here. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with, like, the Dr. Seuss stuff. I'm like, that's just, like, that's capitalism capitalizing on woke shit. That's not, mm-hmm. nobody's canceling anything. I'm, I'm mad about it. Yeah. Look, if you're mad about that, subscribe to the Coward Hour Patreon. Support <laughs> Art. It's great. Support yeah. Through <laughs> underground art. <laughs> I wonder if there's like a Patreon for like if they if they like makes like after Disney like makes Splash Mountain. There's like or like a Kickstarter or something for like a, a new park that's the <laughs> old Splash Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I I want to find the landfill where they take the the like. <laughs> The animatronics and shit. The animatronics, <laughs> take them and just put them in like a podcast studio. <laughs> I love Splash Mountain so much, just because I think the the animals are funny. And now I feel like I'm a bad person for like that being my favorite ride. That and like Carousel of Progress. <laughs> I'm sure that that guy, the the John or whatever his name is, he's probably racist too. They should get rid of Carousel of Progress and replace it with like Carousel of uh, men are bad. It's just, it's just, it's exactly the same, but it's just all women, and they're yeah. progress. Progress yeah. and men are bad are the same concept, folks. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Which I support. Uh, any any last closing thoughts? Yeah, we've hit an hour. We're we're good. Yeah, um, we're good. No, thank you very much for having me on, and I I. I feel really bad about uh, ghosting you guys. <laughs> it was fine. Um, I, I think it's best that you didn't show up a year ago. Yeah, I was I was a nightmare a year ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, bad. things were. Oh, so you've awful. had like a coward hour arc where you? Yeah, we, we've, yeah. Retconned all, we've retconned all our episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. we just deleted last year entirely. Out. Yeah, it was bad. yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that's how podcasts go. I think starting one makes you lose your mind for like. Yeah. Year. Well, no, like we started one immediately after I left, a, like a four year relationship. And then like two months later, the pandemic hit. And then like, <laughs> I just dated like the worst people ever during the pa- It was awful. 
uh-huh. I was really losing it for a little bit, yeah. but I'm good now. <laughs> you're right. Totally solved. Oh, yeah, you seem like you're doing good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, we well, will literally start a podcast instead of going to therapy. Some of the sweeties will still listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Shout yeah. out to a mutual listener of ours. <laughs> Great. Nice. Yes. <laughs> if you're my wife, if you're my wife, don't listen to this episode. I think I came off bad. <laughs> yeah, you were fine. Uh, yeah, great. Actually, getting to chat with you guys, not in the Discord. Yeah, yeah, man, that's awesome. We're, we're thanks, for, thanks for joining. You're us. welcome back if you ever want <laughs> to come back. No problem. All right, I'm gonna go get some McDonald's. So All right, do you, do you perfect. <laughs> Hopefully, the, <laughs> the McDonald's machine works. works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have a single plug? Uh, yeah. Wanna... Listen to Coward Hour. All right. Listen to Coward Hour. Subscribe to the Patreon. You did it. All right, All right. that's the episode and this is um this is the end i'm gonna say good night <laughs>